Let's discuss if lockdown strategy is the best possible option we have for controlling COVID-19. We have focused on who is transmitting the virus, not on who the virus is being transmitted to. If we want to save lives, we need to protect potential victims. With the lockdown, we have caused severe damage to global economy. Millions of people have lost their jobs. Many businesses have been closed down. So the question is, is there a more efficient way of infection control? Lockdown strategy has been found to be very effective in flattening the demand curve, at least here in Europe. It is estimated that 3 million lives were saved during the first wave of infections. But only 4% of the population was infected. So in order to achieve herd immunity, we will have to have more waves of infections. Are we willing to perpetuate lockdown strategy? If not so, the lives that were saved in the earlier wave may be lost. The question is, is there another way of flattening the demand curve without having to destroy the economy? Now, we know something about the virus that we didn't know when the first wave hit us. We know that only 4% of the global population will require hospitalization if infected. We also know that more than 80% of the population will have very mild symptoms. We know our elderly are at risk. We also know people with comorbid conditions such as hypertension and diabetes, etc. are also at risk. And we know that children are not at risk. Only three pediatric deaths were observed out of 50,000 deaths. So, can we ignore all this scientific information when we design an infection control strategy? It is paradoxical that we left our elderly die alone in nursing homes and residences because we didn't have a plan to provide additional resources, personal protective equipment, test kits, and so on, and instead with our lockdown strategy, we spent resources in preventing people, healthy people, from leaving their homes. So the question is, can we save more lives with less resources? So, I designed a targeted prevention strategy according to which, if we take, for example, a region such as Catalonia in Spain, with a population of 7.5 million and we need to control only the vulnerable population, those who are above 70 years who have comorbid conditions such as hypertension or diabetes not controlled, cardiovascular or respiratory diseases and are immunosuppressed. So if we, we sum up all these population, the vulnerable population, we only have 1.7 5 millions out of 7.5 millions. So we only have to control 23% of the total population, not the entire population, which is what the lockdown strategy pretends to control. So according to targeted prevention strategy, we need to divide the population into two groups, the vulnerable group and the non-vulnerable group. There are only about 20 to 23 percent of the population that's vulnerable and this is our focus. So we're going to make sure in our strategy that these people don't get the infection. And we are also going to proactively work on their comorbid conditions. So if they do get the infection, the mortality will be less. We need to ensure that they have healthy living conditions uh, physical exercising, healthy diet, and we also need to make sure that they have the test uh, kits available in case we need to test them. And when the vaccine becomes available, be most indicated for this group of people that we have already readily identified. 
Let's take the non-vulnerable part of the population. They are the majority. Their lives are not at risk if they get the infection. They can do business as usual. If they get the symptoms, they can take time off from work and contribute to herd immunity. Children can go to school as long as we protect vulnerable school employees and vulnerable children. The whole idea is to prevent the non-vulnerable group of people, if infected, from coming in contact with the vulnerable part of the population. With a targeted prevention strategy, we can expect three major benefits. The first and foremost important benefit is to save more lives. Because number one, we are going to prevent this vulnerable population from getting infected. Less infection rate, less mortality rate. And secondly, we are going to work on controlling their comorbid conditions. And therefore, if they do get the infection, the mortality should be less. The second benefit of targeted prevention is resource saving because we have only 23% of the population to control. And because of their age and comorbid conditions, they also happen to be frequent users of the health system. So it's easier and cheaper to establish surveillance on them. Testing is indicated for this group of people, so we don't need to test the entire population. And when the vaccine becomes available, will also be most indicated for this group of people. The third benefit of targeted prevention strategy is the economy. Since 77% of the population is non-vulnerable and they are also at their productive age, they can continue to work, consume and sustain the economy. It so happens that the majority of the vulnerable group are also retired people and even if we need to place them under lockdown for their own protection it will not disrupt the economy